Long story short, I knocked up some girl, and knowing I screwed up I signed away paternity rights and agreed to pay child support. I later found out after 12 years of paying 50k in child support that she slept with six other dudes at that time and just chose me to be the father, not telling me about the other dudes because I was the most financially stable. What an idiot. So I'm suing her for child support. She is calling me an idiot for doing this because she has no family support and only makes 35k a year and that since I make 110k a year, I shouldn't be so mean. I told her that's her only fault and I don't care, I want my money back and I don't care if that financially destroys her, I had my wages garnished to pay for some child that wasn't even mine. I know for a fact that child support money wasn't even going toward that kid, it was going for her to go out partying with friends. A lot of people are saying she couldn't just make a mistake, but I don't care, she had an obligation to find out who the real father was, and yes, I am a dumbass for not getting a DNA test in the beginning, but I got one now, and I have proof the child isn't mine. Not the idiot for wanting your money back, but you probably won't get it, and in fact, you're probably on the hook until the child is 18 or out of school. I'd talk to a lawyer as soon as possible. In the United States people can still be obligated to pay child support for a kid proven to not be theirs because they accepted the responsibility in the past. Legally speaking, you've made yourself the father, even if it's proven you're not the biological parent now. This. This is why establishing paternity early is so important. The courts will likely see the child as OP's, legally, even if he or she isn't OP's biological child because of the long history of paying child support. The only way I could see this changing is having the bio dad step in. Courts generally don't like removing legal responsibility from one parent unless there's another to take their place. You're the idiot. 1. You had 12 years to get a paternity test. It's not mom's fault or the kid's fault that you were that irresponsible. You weren't even in a relationship with this woman, you're incredibly irresponsible for not at least checking. The onus to make sure this is your child is on you, not her. Two. You thought you had a child that you a abandoned and b left with a mom that you apparently think can't care for this child. 3. Even when you thought that this was your child, you weren't paying child support. If you were, your wages wouldn't have been garnished. My wife is pregnant with our first child, only at 5-6 weeks right now. She has had some early complications that resulted in an ER visit and frequent blood work, which unfortunately happened while I was out of town for work. The risk or harm to my wife has passed, but we're now dealing with a potential early miscarriage or ectopic pregnancy, which we're running to ground with our doctors. Pre-ER, my wife was adamant that her mom not find out until second trimester because she is the epitome of a helicopter parent that wants to remain involved and pester and generally make stressfully situations more stressful by needling. My wife told my mother-in-law about the trip to the ER which led her to find out about the pregnancy and subsequent risks. My wife and I have asked her to let us provide updates in our own time and to not notify mother-in-law of every doctor appointment and result because the risks we're talking about are baby infertility and not the health and well-being of my wife. Unfortunately mother-in-law is being persistent and calling six plus times a day for updates and lab results, etc. My wife is not one to pick fights with her mom so ends up telling her stuff and then after the phone call having anxiety spirals because of the rabbit holes her mom sends her down, for example sending her articles about what removing fallopian tubes ectopic pregnancy means for future impregnation. I've already intervened once with a very nice message, reviewed and approved by wife before sending, that said we love you, but let us bring you along at our pace because this is sensitive info, but mother-in-law is still insistent that because it's her daughter, she has a right to know everything. My wife says she's indifferent, but recognizes that her mom sends her in an emotional spiral, but when it comes to the actual phone calls and texts she just sort of gives in, because mother-in-law is relentless in her questioning. This is my first time being the husband of a pregnancy, and a difficult one at that, but would I be the idiot for saying a kinder version of, your daughter's uterus has nothing to do with you, and only affects our current and future children, so please stop harassing us for updates, while we process the news of each of these appointments. Not the idiot. But also, not sure what you hope to accomplish. Short of saying something absolutely relationship-breaking, I don't see her stopping her behavior, and even then she would probably just go put that stress on your wife. 
really, if you want to help, talk to your wife about blocking her on her phone and having all future contacts with your mother-in-law go through you. So any phone, text or email your mother-in-law wants to make goes to you, and then you can be the go-between to filter out the stress for your wife. But even that will only work if your wife consents to it. You need to have a conversation with your wife to see what she really wants. You seem to have your own ideas on how much contact and information is too much, but that may not match your wife's. Now if she wants to limit calls, texts and information also, make a list of her wishes. She should then talk to her mom and at the end of the call email her the list, so she cannot conveniently forget or be confused. Now when she violates your wife's conditions, there will have to be consequences. The first time I would block her on both of your phones, email and all social media for one week can be progressive from there. Sometimes you have to stand up for your vulnerable spouse when they can't do it themselves, but be prepared for fallout. When you do it, don't get emotive and stick to facts. For example, when you send these articles, the consequence is that my wife has panic attacks. Be all, we all care about wife so let's work together to help her. I did this to my husband's family, with doctor's advice, and they will not speak with me now. As a consequence, my husband stopped speaking with them. His life dramatically improved by no contact so in my opinion worth it. My wife and I, both 38, married a year ago after dating for two, I have a girl from a previous marriage, Zoe, 15, and she has a son Saul, 16, my wife comes from a Mexican deeply religious family, I'm an atheist, and so is my ex-wife, that means that we don't force any religion upon Zoe, but if she feels drawn to any of them, then we're more than okay with letting her find her own spirituality. My wife feels different, she has raised Saul to be Catholic, and my stepson has told her that as soon as he turns 18, religion is over for him, and that every time my wife tries to bring him closer to our God, it only draws her further away. I've tried to talk to my wife, but she refuses to listen and claims that Saul is her son, so the final decision comes from her and her family, not me. I had no other choice but to back up, but then my wife started to make some remarks about Zoe not being close to God, and that we had to do something to save her, I said that my ex and I decided to let her do her thing in that matter long ago, and that my daughter wasn't damned in any way. Recently Zo got a boyfriend and my wife is pretty much against the matter, she has tried to tell her that she's too young, that she shouldn't be doing that because in the eyes of God, she was getting strained. Zo tries to be polite most of the time, but told me that my wife was being misogynistic and that she feels disrespected, every time that happens I cut my wife off. Things blew up when my wife found out that Zo was on the pill. I was outside with Saul fixing my bike, when I heard her yelling at Zo, we both got in, and I saw my daughter in the couch crying, and my wife was going at her pretty hard, she called my kids some pretty nasty choice words, and called me an idiot parent for letting my daughter sin so young, but the thing is that Zo is on the pill for something regarding her period, and not because she's sexually active, her mom took her to the doctor, and told me a few weeks ago. Zo ran to her room, and my wife asked me why I never told her, and I said that I didn't thought I needed because it was my daughter's privacy. She said that I'm not letting her parent my daughter, but I told her that as long as the tries to force religion on the kids parenting is not a choice, now her family is at me for letting my daughter take the pill, and that it's only an excuse to sleep with his boyfriend, they said that she has to deal with her period naturally, but I don't agree. Not the idiot. You should support your daughter. She is old enough to know her own mind about religion. If the doctor prescribes her the pill for period reasons that is no business of your wife and certainly not of your in-laws. She is old enough to have medical privacy. But dude, you are a total idiot for marrying this woman. How did you not have a conversation about religion and about how much input you get into raising each other's kids? These are two of the biggest topics any marriage will face and you seem to be completely shocked that your wife has gone down this path. I have a feeling you blew through a ton of red flags on the way to the altar. Did you and your wife discuss what roles you would each play in parenting in your blended family prior to marriage? Your wife isn't trying to parent your daughter, she's shaming, name calling and bullying your daughter for not holding the same beliefs. Your daughter is right, your wife's views about love are misogynistic. Your daughter being on the pill whether it's to regulate her periods or for contraception, is private a healthcare decision and is absolutely none of your wife's business. Your wife is extra out of line for bringing her family into this situation. Not the idiot. My wife and I both have kids from previous marriages, so we are both step-parents, as you two are. 
Step parenting rule number one is, whatever the rest of the rules are, they are applied equally in each direction. So if you are not to interfere in her parenting of her son, she cannot interfere in your parenting of your daughter. Our rule number two is, the parent makes the decisions and the rules, and a step parent supports the parent's decision. Your rules may be different, but they need to be fair and respect the fact that there are other opinions that matter. My husband Rod, 52, is legally blind. He is not completely blind, but close. It's not a genetic issue, but a brain injury that happened when he was a baby. Rod is completely independent, but needs a little bit of help for reading small letters, cooking, typing on a computer, etc. Rod, in my opinion, is a great father and husband. My daughter Raina, 15, has always been a little resentful of Rod. Growing up, she didn't have the normal father-daughter experience. Raina has always been into sports, but because of Rod's incapacity to engage in physical activity that involves coordination, they were never able to bond over that, and Raina never forgave Rod for it. My husband feels especially guilty about this. Raina is going through her angsty teenager face. She has been acting out, is rude with everyone, especially my husband. Raina likes upsetting Rod and he never defends himself, so he's the perfect victim. We were going on our first family outing since the global panini started. To go out, Rod uses this big chunky glasses that make his eyes look huge, almost like a caricature. My husband is super insecure of his appearance when he uses them and our family knows it. My daughter comes downstairs and with the most offended tone of voice she says oh my god, dad. Are you trying to embarrass me? Your eyes look horrendous with those glasses on. I was pissed. I cancelled the outing and told her to go to her room and to not come out until dinner time. Raina is big into her appearance. She wears colored graduated contacts because, ironically, she needs to wear glasses, but she hates to wear them. She isn't uncomfortable wearing them or gets any headaches, she just doesn't like how she looks with glasses on. As a punishment, Raina will not be allowed to wear contacts for a month. I told Raina about her punishment and she is tremendously mad at me. She has a party in a week, and since the punishment is for a month, Raina will attend the party with glasses on. She's also returning back to in-person classes so she will attend school wearing glasses. She says that she will apologize to Rod and will never disrespect him again, but I don't believe her. Rod chimed in and said that maybe the punishment is way too harsh, but I don't think so. Raina then called me names and locked herself in her bedroom. Rod says that I'm being way too hard on Raina and bordering idiot territory, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You're doing a great thing by actually punishing her for saying that. It was just plain cruel and uncalled for. However, I'm not really positive if taking away contact lenses is an appropriate punishment or not. You're still providing her with glasses so she can see. You're just saying that contact lenses are an extra thing that she's not required to have. Which is true. My concern would be that you forcing her to wear glasses would make her self-conscious about wearing glasses. If glasses are a punishment you're saying that they do make her look worse. And that's not the message you're trying to convey obviously. I think Raina is very insecure about how her eyes look and uses colored contacts to help cope with that. You're taking away that coping mechanism as a punishment. And if she really is insecure about how her eyes or glasses look, I would bet she's projecting some of that onto Rod which certainly doesn't help along with what you said about sports. I'm not sure if this is idiot territory, but I think this punishment is not helpful for the situation or Raina's relationship with Rod. No idiots here, but I think you should maybe think about if Raina is really big on her appearance or if something else is going on there. Growing up my dad was never available because of physical and mental issues. I don't think I've ever been rude to him in that regard, but I definitely felt angst and disappointment for not having a normal father. Gradually with the years I was able to appreciate the little I would get from him. The only thing I can say in my experience is that it comes with age. Now, at 25 I know 13 year old me was an idiot and didn't understand mental struggle as much as I do now. That understanding nullifies any angst I've ever felt and there's nothing but love for my dad in my heart now. My wife and I had been trying to conceive for three years before we got pregnant. I was so happy because it was a stressful three years of trying to conceive and she was super happy and started prepping for the baby right away. Then her friends convinced her to go skiing with them even though she'd only been a few times in her youth and was going to be falling a lot. 
She wasn't sure, and I tried to convince her against it but her friends pulled the don't let him tell you what to do, so she went with them. Well she called me at the slopes and I rushed there, but it was too late, and the pregnancy was lost. I was so angry, but tried to keep it to myself, since I knew she regretted it. It's been two years, and we got pregnant again, when she was starting rock climbing now with her friends. I asked her to take a break until after the baby came since we already lost one pregnancy to extreme sports, and she was on board. Then those same friends pulled the don't listen to him, he's just trying to control you card, and she said she wanted to keep going, but would be careful. She agreed to bring up the rock climbing thing with her ob, and the ob told her to wait until the baby was born, since she has a history of miscarriage when doing extreme sports. She said she understood, but then I found her packing her climbing bag, and she told me she wanted to go and was just going to take it easy. I can't believe after 5 years she wouldn't just wait till after the pregnancy to do what she wants. I told her she was being selfish since we already lost one, and she didn't even do extreme sports when she wasn't pregnant. She yelled at me saying she wanted to go rock climbing, and she didn't need permission. What kind of idiot goes skiing, or rock climbing when newly pregnant? What kind of wife listens to her idiot friends over her husband's legitimate concerns? I would have seriously reconsidered whether she was ready to be a mother the first time. I think it's pretty clear that she isn't this time. Her judgment blows big time. If this pregnancy goes to term this time, I'd watch her like a hawk. You never know when she'll decide to take junior skydiving. Her doctor has specifically warned her against it. She is being reckless. Does she have a degree in medicine and 15 years of experience as a doctor or obstetrician? If her friend needed surgery will she be doing it now? Or if a friend dislocated their shoulder climbing, will she put it back in place? Because she seems to think she's as knowledgeable as a doctor. I hope she will be okay, and I hope your baby is born healthy, and her pregnancy is okay. But if something happens, you need to leave this relationship, her actions are dangerous and reckless, and it's worrying that she will be a mother to be honest. Wife's friends are the real idiot for encouraging her to go back on her original decision and promise to you to abstain from extreme sports this pregnancy. They say he's trying to control you, but they are just as guilty of the same thing with no personal stake in the child she's carrying. But why is wife so impressionable? It would be one thing if she were a lifelong rock climber and had a hard time giving up her passion during pregnancy, but that's not the case at all here, she just seems really susceptible to peer pressure. So, she's an idiot too.